Hey everybody, if you don't like the long intros, uh, skip right to 1310 for the interview. Hello everybody, welcome to episode number 25 of the Vaughn Dubcast. Um, it's kind of crazy to think that it's already been 25 episodes. Seems like just yesterday I was, uh, you know, sitting there having a meditation and and coming out of it and with the realization that I need to uh, to start this podcast and it seemed like it's just been a whirlwind since then. Uh, the Probably the craziest uh, four months that work has ever been was also during that time so it's been uh, a lot of learning and a lot of uh, failing and a lot of figuring things out as you go um, but I've been enjoying every second of it on this front uh, this has been really keeping me going when work gets tough when those things get tough the uh, the messages from you guys really make it worth it and make me uh, confident that I'm on the right path and that this is something that uh, I'm meant to be doing and that I uh, I'm going to be successful at it one day so Thank you guys for that. I really appreciate it. Um, really fun episode today. I uh, had followed Damon just kind of uh, from from the outside watching what he's doing. I was really proud of uh, the progress he had made and uh, the steps he had taken and, and kind of him and a lot of his friends have really impressed me over the years. And then uh, when I reached out to Damon and started to uh, research and listen to his podcast, I really, really uh realize why it's so funny how these things work i just kind of had a funny feeling that dame would be a good guest i didn't know why but then when he agreed to it i started listening to his podcast and then we line up with so many things we have such a similar story so many uh so many of our traumas uh, are similar and what we got into i mean this is a bit of a shorter podcast and we i had honestly pages and pages of things i wanted to talk about and guaranteed he'll be a he'll be a guest on this podcast and me and damon are going to do lots of things in the future together because i just really want to support what he's doing uh with uh with his podcast and, and, his, and his personal training i think for me struggling with my weight my whole life and that always and, and self-image issues were always such a big deal to me i i always had this uh this this giant ego that I could do anything I wanted as long as uh, it wasn't gated by physical ability. You know, I, I always hated my body and hated how I looked and hated everything about it uh, for a long time. And, and I could never do anything about it. I'd lose a little bit of weight, I'd gain it back. And it all came down to the fact that I wasn't really uh, wasn't really loving myself. And I know I've talked about that on lots of these podcasts, but it's very important. And I think that's what I think is so important about uh, someone like Damon or, or, or any one-on-one personal trainer that has the understanding of that fact and knows that that's more important than any diet, any workout regime. It's all about your self-image and knowing that you deserve what, uh, deserve anything. You deserve anything you want to put your mind towards as long as you, uh, you honestly believe it. And I think that's what's so special and what's going to make him successful and what's already making him successful. So yeah, it was a very cathartic process to talk about on the podcast. Um, we talk about, uh, some, some tougher things and, uh, you know, I, I talk about some issues and where, where some of that body image stuff comes from, uh, in my family. And I had uh, just to keep you guys abreast, uh, I like to be open with you guys al- along the way for a multitude of reasons. Maybe I'll get into after, but I have discussed, you know, and talk about things with my family, um, in, in where my body issues come from. And I, and I've already cleared this with them to really release it. I'd never want to put anyone in a bad position or say something on here that, uh, that they, they're not okay with because, uh, I, I did this willingly. I signed up for this, but the people in my life, uh, they, they, they didn't have any waiver. They didn't have any decision in me starting this and putting these things kind of out there publicly. So I just want to let you guys know that this was all cleared with people that are talked about in the podcast. I clear it with them first because uh, that's just who I am and that's kind of what I want to do. But going back to kind of just what I was saying about keeping you guys along for the ride, I think most of my favorite podcasts, and I think probably the one that really showed this to me was uh, Flagrant 2 is with a podcast, because it's so personal, it's it's okay to let people in on the on the on the insider secrets of what I'm trying to do, how I'm trying to make it successful. You know, I want to bring you guys along for the ride. If you're listening to it this early, um, you, you're you're part of that ride, and um, I just think so much of uh, you know Hollywood and TV shows and all that. It's all about keeping that uh, keeping that barrier up and, and not letting people in. And I think that's what's uh, special about these podcasts is you can kind of talk about those things and 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 be more open about it and, and talk about my goals and how I want to grow it and kind of the, the strategies I'm taking, how I'm trying to get guests on. And, uh, and then I think when you're, when you allow that vulnerability and that openness, because it is kind of embarrassing sometimes to talk about some of the failures and, uh, trying to get bigger guests on and, uh, and, you know, maybe having them snub you and all that kind of stuff. I want to talk about that kind of stuff and, uh, and, and bring you guys along for that ride with me as much as I, uh, as much as I can. So, yeah. Um, also just a little sober October, optimized October update. Uh, it's October 7th today. So seven days in, um, 
I think I talked about it in the intro of the last podcast, maybe when I released it, but holy man, was that uh, no pop a, a tough uh, tough one at the start, but uh, starting to come through it and really getting some uh, some positive momentum, reading every day, trying to stretch, uh, meditating every day, um, trying to invite a podcast guest today, haven't really been holding myself to that one as good. I've been trying to do, most days I have invited somebody, but not every day, so I'm trying to get better on that and maybe invite two on a, on a certain day just to play a little bit of catch up, but that's been awesome. I've been reading uh, Own the Day, Own Your Life by Aubrey Marcus. Again, probably talked about it before, but can't recommend that book enough. I've been learning uh, a whole bunch and, and and backing up and remembering a lot of stuff that I've that I've uh, heard over the years on podcasts, but it didn't really stick in my brain. Then when I read them on paper, it's like, oh yeah, how did I, uh, I never really brought that uh, aspect in my life. I know that's important, right? I know vitamin b12 is important for example you just you know you hear it goes in one one ear out the other and you know it's important but you don't actually do anything about it but then you read about it oh man that's important omega-3s those those are important and, and the ratios between omega-3s and omega-6 just so much information I, i've been uh, really digging that one i'm excited to get through it because i have a really uh really good fiction book i'm excited for from an author i really love so as soon as i get through that book that's gonna be my next one to make sure i'm uh, getting my reading in every day um i found a couple strategies uh, my efficiency brain i found i can uh, work on my conscious breathing get my reading in and do some stretching i figured out a way to read at the at the kitchen sink and figure out a way to kind of work some stretching in using the sink and and everything uh to its uh to its full advantage and i'm just uh really enjoying finding ways to optimize uh and and get a couple of those goals that i want to do for optimize october all in in, in uh, one kind of half hour session like that so that's been really exciting for me anytime i can do something efficient if efficiently sorry uh i, I really get excited about it just because efficiency is such a big part of uh part of my life and, and, and what I want to do. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, and definitely what helps me, I, I've had a couple of people ask me now of, you know, I, I want to support other than listening, what can I do to support the podcast? And, and all I can ask you at this point, you know, I don't have sponsors, nothing, but just support the guests. You know, if, if you're thinking about personal training or something, go to Damon, you know, someone like this that has this understanding that you can hear from this level, you, you can never get that from a little, you know, paragraph blurb on, online when you're looking at personal trainers of what they're about you're never going to get that listen to someone like this that has this idea and if you are find someone that understands the mental aspect and wants to bring that in that's not just a uh, a pure physical guy or a girl that just wants to uh, sweat your bag off and, and leave it at that there's so much more to it and i find that i tried that for many many years it just you know just work out and work out and work out and diet and hold yourself to these things there's so many more aspects to it that are that are preventing you from reaching reaching the goals that you want. Um, you just need to be uh, made aware of it. And somebody that specializes it and has the understanding, like Damon, is 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 a, a huge asset. And uh, guys like Dog Island Brewery, right? They just have a new beer out. Uh, you got to go check them guys out. Uh, Mommy Chin Chin's cookies with Sean. You know all those guys. If you hear them on the podcast, go there. So, try out their, uh, try out their businesses, get, get on board with them. That's what helps me. And, and that, uh, that's kind of my goal right now is I'm not trying to make money off this podcast. I'm just trying to amplify some voices. Uh, and then when I grow this podcast to a size where I want to transition it and try and make money with it and kind of make that my goal, I'll do that at that point. But at this point, I just want to kind of show you guys, bring people that I think are interesting to you guys. And, uh, like I've said to a couple of the podcasts on here, some people are, they think, well, when I ask them, well, do you want, do you want to be on the podcast? I go, well, I haven't done nothing. I don't know, but I feel like a lot of times I want to get in early with people uh, and get them on the podcast before they, I mean, maybe they've done something to me and they don't think in their head they've done something, but I know they will do things. I see it in them, uh, just what they can do. And I, I'm so excited to have my first uh, return guest on to see exactly what uh, what I see in them and where they've gone with it, because I have full confidence that anybody that's ever on this podcast uh, is uh, is going to do special things. And I think I just want, as soon as you're a past guest on here, I want to support you in everything you do. And I want to blow up, you know, you have a new venture. I want to make it as, as you know, as successful as possible. And whatever small audience I have behind me, I want to bring that to these people and help them along the way. So that's that's what I want to do. And if, and if you guys could help me out by helping them out, that'd be a huge, uh, that would mean a lot to me. So yeah, that's kind of the one way you can uh, help me out other than just listening. And, and like I said, at the end of all the podcasts, there's also ideas. If you are listening every week and you're doing it anyways, I have little things that you could do uh, just by listening um, that I could kind of 
let you in on that that helps me as well. So if you are finding yourself listening every week and, and, and you're coming back and you're enjoying it, let me know because there's things that I can add to it that would be a huge help just to, for uh, having extra ears to listen, whether it's something just as small as listening for audio issues. Because like I said a couple podcasts ago, there's audio issues on past ones that I just hear about now and it makes me sick to my stomach because I kind of re-uploaded them right away with just a, you know, up in the volume or if you can't hear it, just let me know those negative things. I know uh, I love the positive messages, but the negative stuff is good too. It helps me grow and helps me kind of fix this and bring it to the next level because uh, right now it's just me figuring out and I'm hoping to uh, eventually bring some people on board to help me kind of figure out more of the technical aspects and make sure it's sounding better for you guys and I've uh, been working on it I'm hoping it's getting better with time but then every once in a while something like this episode happens and I got to be up front with you guys I don't know what happened but my audio was cranked on this one like Damon was fine and for some reason on the other ones, people were saying, you're really quiet. And I thought, oh man, I'm quiet. So then when I go into this podcast and upload it into the program to do the editing, I was just about ready to crank it up. And I look at the waveform and it's just peaking all over the place. So I tried to crank it down, but it's tough. Uh, You can, apparently the old adage goes, I'm not a tech guy, so I don't really know if this is true or not, but they say you can always turn something up, but it's hard once you go past the high range to turn something back down. So I did my best with it. If it sounds like shit, I apologize. I'm trying my best and I'll do better on the next one. I don't, I still don't know what happened. I've recorded one since and it's never happened again. So I'm not sure if I just changed the uh, angle of my mic or something is picking it up better, but who knows, but I apologize for that. And uh, I'll, uh, I'll make sure that doesn't happen again as best as I can do it and try and really uh, work to make sure it's getting better and better for you guys. And uh, I'm really trying to uh, get that in-person setup ready so I can start bringing you guys some uh, non zoom interviews, get some in-person. I do feel like there's a lot more, uh, a lot more impact to those and you can read a little more body language and uh, get a little more out of them. So I'm hoping to have that ready as soon as I can. And I'm hoping to get uh, a, a YouTube channel going. So it's another place to listen. That's uh, easy, uh, easy for you guys. And maybe for sitting at work and uh, you can't, uh, you have to be plugged into your computer. You can just open up a YouTube window up behind and listen to my podcast while you do your stuff and don't tell your boss. I won't tell if you won't tell. Um, I think that's how I started listening to a podcast many years ago when I was stuck in this one project with lots of spreadsheets that was just absolutely destroying my brain. I threw on, uh, I said, well, I've been here about these podcasts, you know, well, what's going on? I, I think I found Nerdist. It was the first one I ever listened to was uh, the Nerdist podcast. I can't even remember the guy's name. And I listened to the first hundred episodes cause they were free on YouTube. And then, uh, from there, I think I, I heard, uh, I was really obsessed with Scientology and I heard Leah Remini was on Joe Rogan and I had always kind of scoffed at Joe Rogan because that was all what all the stoners uh, arguments would be in, in high school. And I was such so anti-pot when I was growing up that I, and everyone would say, oh, Joe Rogan smokes pot. So I oh, fuck Joe Rogan then because that's all you guys' argument is completely understand that now and what a hypocrite I am and how silly that is to think of. But that was my argument at that time. And, uh, you know, it's it's funny to see how far I've come from that. But then just listening to him and just how uh, insightful he was and then and then starting to listen to his more regularly and then going back to his back catalog and then finding guests from that podcast that uh, sent me down, uh, listening to their own and, and just really sent me on this path of learning and really increased uh, my knowledge of who I am and, and, and what I want to do with my life and really ended me up here. So yeah, I, uh, really working on this to make it better for you guys. And I hope you guys are enjoying and, uh, yeah, have fun. All right. Welcome, Damon. Thanks for being here. Yeah, of course. I'm excited. I said, yeah, me, I, I was uh, really excited going into it. I think uh, just watching your journey and, you know, growing up in similar uh, communities and and uh, in a similar upbringing with a very, very uh, set um, idea of what it is to be a man and kind of growing up in that, um, it sets you up for, for certain things. It makes you really strong in some areas and really weak in others. And I think uh, part of my journey just lately has been uh, rounding out those areas where maybe I was lacking a little bit before. And it's been such a, a great journey for myself. And then when I looked over at you and see what you're doing, I could see so many things that were very different, but very similar. And I just uh, was very excited to get you on. And then today, just in prep, I started listening to your podcast and listen to some episodes. And I didn't even realize how uh, on the money I was with, uh, with having you on. I think we're going to have a really good time here, Damon, because uh, just listening to the, the emotional side and the spiritual side and, and how much more goes into it than just, you know, 
what a trainer is going to tell you, you know, they can tell you do 10, 20 pushups, 10 squats, and that gets you so far, but somebody that can really connect with you and take you past that and really connect with what is holding you back and getting you motivated to want to make a change. That's what's really special. And just to see you do that, people, it's blown me away and I'm really excited to have you here. Awesome, man. No, thank you for that. I, I, I look forward to it. And the thing is for me is when I was going through my journey and I'm sure like yourself, you, you probably recognize mm -hmm. this is it was so much more than physical. Um, I, I, I think I, I didn't really start to see the results that I wanted until I started to focus more on that mental side of it as well. And then mm -hmm. that's kind of when I started, I guess when I started training, I, I kind of, I realized that it is, it's, it's, it is more, more than physical. And I wanted to find that connection between the body and the mind. And for me, that's, mm -hmm. that's transferred over into my, my training philosophy is, it's basically yeah. that is I want to connect that mind to the body. And for me with, within doing that, you're going to harmonize the spirit. And that's kind of what I'm looking to do through mm -hmm. my training. Um, for myself, I found that fitness and physical, the physical, physical aspect of it was a, was a good start. But, and, and mm -hmm. then from there it just expanded and it blew up and it, it became this thing that like, even looking back and reflecting yeah. on it, it's like, such a completely different look on life and everything. And it's, it's, it's crazy, man. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and it's funny to hear you say that mind body connection. That's something I talk about all the time on my podcast. And, uh, my sister's a physiotherapist and, and so was her fiance and, uh, they get to see firsthand every day. And I'm sure you do too, how much we are lacking in that mind body connection and just how, uh, that has been almost completely severed where, um, you know, evolutionarily when we're, uh, on the on the on the plains in in the forest where wherever uh, you, you evolved, uh, you had to be in touch with your body. Your your life mm -hmm. depended on it, and now things have gotten to a point where you don't depend on it that much, and it and it definitely um, makes that connection a little more tenuous. And it's so funny to uh, to be around people that get to see that day in and day out, and just how um, involved they are with realizing the importance of that connection. And uh, just somewhere I wanted to start, Dan, was just before that, because I think both of us have uh, taken some really big strides in the last couple of years, but I kind of wanted to just start way before that, because I think my, uh, until probably the last five years, my uh, probably mental health and physical journey was just a roller coaster of ups and downs and mostly downs on the physical side. I mean, I was, uh, I was overweight from the time I was in high school and not that bad in high school, but in my mind in high school, I thought I was huge. Right. And, and, and all that. And then, um, looking back now, it wasn't that bad, but then I definitely kind of, because I saw myself as, as that, as soon as I went to university, I ballooned up, you know, I was, uh, closer to 300 pounds than I was to 200 for a lot of my mm -hmm. university career. And, you know, my, got out of my fourth year and I'm almost 280 pounds and I'm looking at myself like, Holy shit, what is going on? And then to go through that. But I found that I just was not equipped with the tools. And then over the next, you know, from that point of graduating till the point I'm at now, I've learned so many tools for myself and I, and I've realized what was holding me back so much, but just, I'm kind of curious with you, what do you think was holding you back and, and what changed for you to help you uh, actually start seeing those goals and start uh, making, making strides? Mm -hmm. Yeah. For, for myself, I was always kind of, I was, uh, I was always kind of overweight and um, I was always in and out of the, in and out of the gym and I didn't really stick mm -hmm. with it. Yeah. And for me, the physical aspect of it wasn't really working. And what happened was I, I, I got up to 285 pounds. That was, I was 285 pounds at my heaviest. And I stepped yeah. on the scale and I was like, holy fuck, man, like I'm almost 300, 300 pounds. Like if I continue going at mm -hmm. this rate, like I'm going to die. Like it, it, that's just kind yeah. of what got in my head. So I guess that was kind of like my aha moment. That's when I realized like I need to make a change. And then, so from there, I started to, I started to read books. I started to listen to podcasts. I started to go to the gym a lot mm -hmm. more. Um, and looking back at it now, like I realized that I was, I was in a victim mindset. And I yes, think that's me too. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of people are. Yeah, and that's probably the biggest change that I've noticed in myself is, is just shifting out of that victim mindset. I always felt, I always felt that, um, things were happening to me. I always thought life was so shitty. I thought everything was always happening to me. I always thought people were judging me. I always thought mm -hmm. I, I, all these things, all these things that people deal yeah. with on a daily basis. But like, I feel like for myself, I was doing it on like the worst end of the, like the worst possible yeah. way. Like I was so hard on myself and like, 
I would beat myself up and I started to realize that it was all in my head. Yeah. People, maybe people didn't uh, interact with me because of the way I, I was. So I realized that it started mm-hmm. with me. I would beat myself up. Yeah. So, like, for example, I would wake up in the morning. I would look in the mirror. First thing I would say to myself is, fuck, you're a fat piece of shit, man. And like you start mm-hmm. your day like that. From there, it's just, yeah. it's going to be downhill. If that's how you're going to start your day, then everything that happens is going to be bad. Um, maybe, mm-hmm. maybe you're on your way to work and somebody cuts you off and now it's like, oh, this motherfucker, like what, what's he's, he's, he's against me. Mm-hmm. And then now it's like everything else you get to work and somebody gives you kind of like a dirty look and it's like, oh fuck, this person doesn't like me. Oh, like, I wonder what they're thinking about me. And then it's like all these mm-hmm. things start to start to pile up and pile up. And by the end of the day, you're so just like out of it. Like you don't even really know what's going on. I look, mm-hmm. I look back on my life, like even three or four years ago and it's like, what even happened, man? Like what, like, what was I even doing? Yeah. Like, it's like, I was just like, so out of it. And I was like, so in my own head and just like running through all these negative thought patterns. And it's just like, yeah, really telling yourself stories, telling myself these bullshit stories, like these stories that don't mm-hmm. even make sense. And the thing is I would, yeah. I would then validate them and I would make them real. And that's another thing yeah. I started to learn is that whatever you're thinking, that's going to become your reality. That's going to become your physical experience. Of course. And the thing is the ego, whatever your thought is, your ego is going to prove that thought, right? Whatever it is. So Mm -hmm. if I think Mm -hmm. I'm a fat piece of shit, now everything I do, everything I say is going to prove that right. Now I'm going to feel like a a fat piece of shit. I'm going to, I'm going to look like it and I'm going to carry that. And that's who I'm going to be. That becomes my identity because that's what I'm telling myself over and over and over again. Mm Mm-hmm. I I, uh, I couldn't agree more with that. That is one of the biggest mindset shifts. That 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 uh, that self pity mindset to uh, to a self accountability mindset is so shifting. Not only just in, in in physical health goals or or mental health goals, but just in everything in life. Because when you start to see everything as what could I have done in this situation, even if it's something where the fates aligned and something really shitty happened to you, that it's hard to find your own personal accountability. When you start to work on it, you can find personal accountability in anything, right? Mm-hmm. You, you get struck by lightning. That's something you did to be out in that field at that time, right? Not, you know, it's a, mm-hmm. a roundabout way of getting to it, but it's such a healthier place to live from. And then you can start to see it in other people of now everybody else is just worried about themselves. And, and you can start to see when you take that accountability in yourself, you start to see where other people are lacking it in themselves too. Mm-hmm. And you can start to honestly get a better picture of the world. It's like you have this distorted mindset around you and you're walking through life with these bullshit stories. And then you start to see with just that one small switch of just taking accountability mm-hmm. for your own actions in every situation as much as you can. And that's a skill too. And you have to work on that and you have to get better mm-hmm. at it. But it just changes how you how you look at everything. And it changes that same exact thing you said where your ego will make anything a reality if you let it Mm -hmm. that's a powerful skill right and if you go through your whole life letting that beat you up when you make that switch and you start to use that power for good it's like a superpower in you and but just somehow you didn't realize how to use it and instead of using it for good it's been kicking your ass your whole life but then this one small thing switches and you realize holy shit if i put these things i can manifest these things i can make things happen Mm -hmm. right if i say i want to become a person i can make that happen if i want to start a podcast and i want it to be a success i can make that happen Mm -hmm. it's just about keeping those thoughts in your head and it's such a such a a game-changing switch for anything you want to do i think if you're going to want to be successful in anything Mm -hmm. you need that and i think uh i think people uh you know, think that it's, it's, it's something that happens over overnight, but it, it's a constant thing that you work on everything. Mm-hmm. I think that's probably other than that, Damon, probably the biggest thing I've learned putting myself in that is that, uh, I used to think of things as some things are skills. Some, some things are just innate, mm-hmm. but the more I got down this journey to take accountability, everything's a skill and you can work on everything. Right. I used to think like, Oh, I don't have willpower. Mm-hmm. Oh, I just have to keep it because I don't have willpower. Willpower is a skill. If you work on that and you start mm-hmm. that every day. Right. And then like you said, of what you start in the morning, you start your morning rolling out of bed and grabbing a, a couple pop tarts. That's one way to start your day. Or you start your day with a 10 K run and a cold shower and you're, you're ready to work and you haven't looked at social media until you've sat down, you've got your first hour of work out of the way and you've, you know, got the things off your plate. That's a completely different way to start mm-hmm. a day. And it's those thoughts that compound and you can start on a good note and you can, like you say, you can let the little things derail you, but when you've had a good base and you've already had a few wins in your day, that getting cut off in traffic is a completely different thing than when you just rolled out of bed, you d- didn't get good sleep before and you mm. didn't eat good, you know, you had half a pizza before you went to bed. Yeah. I mean, I'm describing my own life for, for, for the majority of it, right? I've only been kind of trying to work on this on myself for a couple of years and it's just so funny to see how obvious and it's almost painful because once you go through that and you see it it's so obvious and i think that was a big part of me starting a podcast and i imagine a big part for yourself is just oh i want other people to realize this i don't want to share this to myself this is this is amazing information i want everybody around me Mm -hmm. i don't want to be 
having anybody in, in, in impact my life that isn't aware of this knowledge, right? Mm-hmm. It's one thing to be uh, aware of it too and, and choose not to look at it or choose not to enact it, I guess. And there's one way just to be ignorant to it and walk through life uh, w- without, uh, without realizing there's this whole other side you could be working on. There's, there's these positive directions you could be going, but you're just kind of close. You close yourself off to them. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. No, the yeah. way I look so at then, it, sorry. Yeah. Um, just to go back on that self accountability thing, the, yeah. the way I look at it is the shit is happening automatically and it's happening anyways, whether you're aware of it mm-hmm. or not, it, it's happening. I think for the most yeah. part, most people, it's happening happening subconsciously, so they're not aware of it, and mm-hmm. it's 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 not happening. But like you said, once you're aware of that, and you can you can make things happen, you can create things. Like you want to start a podcast, you can start a podcast. You want it to be successful, you can make it successful. As long as you're willing to put in the mm-hmm. work and you're willing to continue with that work, then you're able to do anything. Mm-hmm. I think yeah, raw talent is a thing. But I don't think raw talent is as big of a thing as people make it. Um, uh, li- living in Alberta, I'll use Connor McDavid as an example. Yes, mm-hmm. I, I guarantee you he was born with it. But I think being born yeah. with it is a lot different than people think. Being born with it doesn't mean you just came out of the womb and boom, you're the fucking best player in the world. That's not how it works. Yeah. This guy put in endless amounts of work for, for how mm-hmm. old is he, 24 years old? For 24 years, this guy's mm-hmm. been dedicated to his craft, to his sport, and he's been putting in the work. He doesn't yeah. just, in the off season, he's not just fucking laying around watching Netflix, yeah. wondering what yeah. what's going on in the American yeah. politics or whatever it might be. He's yeah. Look, look at his look at his uh, his recovery from that knee injury. There, there's nobody else who's going to do that. Like that's oh. just this guy's just a fucking machine when it comes to mm-hmm. work, and that's what it comes down to. Anything, whether it's yeah. being an ath- athlete, being starting a business, starting a podcast, losing weight, it all comes down to putting in that work, mm-hmm. taking action and making sure that you're continuing to work towards that result. Yeah, and, and, I, and I think that's exactly right, Damon. And I think in, in when you find self-accountability, it allows for honesty to a level. And I think there's always going to be a mixture of um, hard work, skill, and luck in anything you do, mm-hmm. right? But in order to realize what something's going to require of you, you need honesty about your, the only thing you can control in that is the skill and the luck. But the mm-hmm. luck comes from hard work and and as much skill as you can. Skill is unchangeable. You have what you have for skill. You can't really affect that. Mm-hmm. But you need to realize how much hard work is going to require to get to this goal by being honest with yourself about your skill, right? Mm-hmm. There's hockey players. Like you look at Paul Bizanet, not the not the greatest player in the world, but he grinded and worked hard and was a good guy on the bench mm-hmm. and would do those things because he was honest. He was accountable with himself, could realize my talent is not enough to lean on. I'm going to have to outgrind all these guys and that will probably only bring me up to a fourth liner mm-hmm. and that might get me a couple games in the show. Whereas a Connor McDavid could probably go with no training or not with no training, he would never make the show. You need to have a certain level. But if he didn't have that dogged determination to do everything he could to make himself the best in the world, he'd probably still be in the NHL, but he wouldn't be Connor McDavid, mm-hmm. right? You need that hard work. That hard work is so much more important. And when you have hard work, when you can match your hard work up to a level where it matches what you need in skill to achieve any goal, the luck will come, right? Mm-hmm. As long as you keep grinding, the, the, the luck may come at a later date. It may not come when you want it, it but it will come when you're ready is mm-hmm. the other thing too. And I find that that... Maybe this is something that I could run by you too, Damon, because I found that this has been demonstrably true for this podcast. The moment I decided explicitly to start it, and I hadn't told anybody yet, I just told myself, no no more excuses, you're starting this. Things just started to fall into place. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, guests would g- come into like people you haven't talked to in a long time would do that. You'd get this little piece of information and things just started to fall into place. Mm-hmm. And things I didn't realize about myself started to become apparent. And I just found that the more you put out in the world and the more you focus on that forward momentum call it whatever you will call it spiritual call it whatever you want there's something that helps you along the way Mm -hmm. and i think a big piece of that something that uh i've been kind of tossing around as a theory that's really interesting i have a book sitting there that i haven't got to because my stack of books i need to read is about 12 (laughs) feet tall right now but um it's about uh um the oh what's it called terror management theory so Mm. it's something where they said evolutionarily we uh we were the first animal on earth to be able to um think about our own mortality, mm-hmm. right? And and that is a debilitating thing. You see people that, that really struggle with that fact and the, th- the fact that we're all going to die at some point. That can either, uh, you know, really ruin somebody or give people a lot of power. But for the most part, just so that you can walk around every day, we have this amazing ability to compartmentalize and to not 
well, we'd have the ability to lie to ourselves too, but this is on a deeper level where it's not even lying. It's, it's, it's the difference between the conscious and the subconscious. Mm-hmm. That's really what it mm-hmm. is. And that's what they're saying. The whole basis of a subconscious is, is that was developed. You have a subconscious so that you can put things like that away and still go out and create a life. Mm-hmm. But what is so cool about it, what they're saying is you need for you to compartmentalize something away to that degree, you have to have a really deep understanding of that mm-hmm. to convert men. Like, Cause if you don't really understand it, you can't really, you know, create all these bullshit stories that you say to work around these things that you don't want to, you don't want to look at in yourself. Those bullshit stories, when you look back and when you look back on your four, four years uh, ago self, and you go, man, those, how, how did that, if I could bottle the bullshitting ability to tell myself these stories, I'd be a millionaire, mm-hmm. right? Like it's so powerful because it comes from that point where, um, you don't know it. But then what I think is so cool, Damon, and I found this for myself is because so many of those things that are deep down that work you need to do, you already know a lot of it. And mm-hmm. so many people have told me lately, like, it doesn't feel like I'm learning. It feels like I'm remembering these things. Mm-hmm. Like I already knew this and I'm just remembering it. And I think it's because we know these things about their stuff. Nobody can tell you, you know, nobody's harder on you than you are. Like you said, when you first wake up in the mirror and you used to, you know, say awful things. I do that to myself all the time. I think the biggest time it comes to a head lately is when I'm editing my own podcast and I'm trying to record these intros and I'm screaming at myself, oh, you fucking idiot, you can't even talk, you get your words out. And it's this self-talk that you almost don't realize where it is until you start to hold yourself accountable to that talk. Like, why am I talking to myself this way? I, I love myself. I don't mm-hmm. need to, I don't deserve this, you know? And I just find that uh, it's it's so cool to have that understanding of, Oh, I don't, it's, it's not that hard. It's not that hard to work once you start because you already know all this. It's not like you have to go on this big journey to discover these things about yourself. You just have to get comfortable enough to just open yourself up to them. And they're already there. You already have that knowledge. It's just about working on yourself to the point where you can be, um, confident enough to let it in and, and acknowledge it almost. Mm -hmm. And I just want, does that, uh, does any of that ring true with you at all? Absolutely. Um, So like when you're talking about your podcast and you just like decide, you know, what, I'm just going to do it. And it's now everything starts to fall into place for you. Yeah. And it's like when we first talked, um, I, I seen one of your posts that you had this fear about starting the podcast. And mm-hmm. that fear is, is telling you exactly what you need to do. If you have a feeling of fear, yeah, that don't look at it as fear. T- look at it as, okay, this is what I need to do this. If I do this thing, everything's yes. going to work out for me. So for an example, mm-hmm. let's say you want to lose some weight and you're scared to go to the gym. I'm, I'm afraid of the gym. I fear the gym. Mm-hmm. That's what you got to do. You got to go to the fucking gym. Yeah. That's what's going to allow you to yeah. get what you want. And for me, mm-hmm. I, I believe, I believe I'm not really a, a religious guy myself. I respect mm-hmm. religion. I, I understand why it works for people. Um, it's just for yeah. me, it's not, it's not my, my go-to. I do believe in right. the universe. And what I believe is yeah. I believe that the universe is always working for you. Mm-hmm. It's not going against you. The universe wants you to succeed. The universe wants, and everything's kind of connected. So it's like, that's yeah. partly why I feel when you do, let's say you read something new or somebody says something and it's like, oh, I know that. But it's like, yeah. you know it, but it's like, it's like, you're just like remembering it. It's like, okay, like. Yeah. Awesome. And it's like, it's because we're all kind of connected through that, through the universe. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you're familiar with, For sure. with Napoleon Hill. Hmm. I, I don't think I am. Oh, if you're not, okay. If you're not familiar with uh, Napoleon Hill, you really got to read his book. It's called Think, Think, okay. Think and Grow Rich. Okay. Think and Grow Rich. Probably 100% top three books I've ever read. Ar- arguably yeah. number one. Um, but he he talks about in there how we are in communication with the universe. And Mm -hmm. if you, if you think about it, like the little, the little voice in your head, like that, he's basically saying that that is you talking to the universe. So, Mm -hmm. well, I I can even remember a couple years ago um, when when I first started training, um, Mm -hmm. I remember sitting, sitting in my living room and almost like meditating and like thinking like, okay, like I'm, I have some problems. I can't remember exactly what the problems were. And I remember sitting there and like talking to my, myself, like in my mind, as if it was like the yeah. universe. And then like you mm-hmm. sit with it long enough and all of a sudden the answer just like appears and it's like, okay, yes. like this is kind of weird. And then you do it again. And then the answer kind of appears again. 
And it's like, all right, like, so maybe this shit is actually true. And like, maybe we are in direct communication with the universe and we are available Mm -hmm. to all this information out there. We just got to give ourselves that time and give ourselves that space and open up to it and then allow Mm -hmm. ourselves to accept Mm -hmm. this information so that we can do what we want to do or what we need to do or what we're trying to do. Does that Mm -hmm. make sense? That makes a hundred percent sense. I'm just trying to keep track of all the, all the different points you hit there. I want to talk about every single one of them because that's exactly what I think. And uh, so, just to kind of start uh, start at the finish line, kind of where you ended there. But you know, it's it's almost like there's radio waves of that of that that universe is talking to you at all times. You just need to calm yourself enough to be able to hear it. Right. Mm-hmm. That's almost kind of what I said. And I think that mirrors so much my experience, Damon, because I think before I started this podcast, I got to probably the lowest point I've ever had. I I had never fully felt depression in my life and I was depressed for the first time in my life. It was during coronavirus. Work was very stressful, right? The oil hit tank. I'm running, you know, a, a decent sized business. I have people depending on me. I have employees. It was a very stressful time. Um, my, my girlfriend at the time was finishing up school. So it was long distance at the time. We were doing that for three years. So it wasn't that big deal, but just was completely alone. It was isolated away from everybody because it was the first start of COVID. I hadn't even seen family. And I was at the bottom, like, as low as I've been in my life, I'd never felt that before because I was always such a realist and it scared the fuck out of me, mm-hmm. scared the absolute fuck out of me because I'd never felt that before. And I always heard people talk about depression and talk about that feeling and I'd never, and I think once I felt it on that level, I, I could go back and be like, oh, I felt, I, I felt pieces of this at times, mm-hmm. you know, with breakups and say, but I've never felt it to this degree. And it was such a game changing experience. And I, I, uh, I, I tried all sorts of things and I, and I, and I, and I went back home and I saw my parents and I, and I opened up to them and it was, uh, a really powerful time, but what I what I tried on the on the Sunday of that weekend was uh, meditation mm-hmm. for the first time. I'd never meditated in my life, and I just tried. I'm gonna go sit down 20 minutes, and I I, I was trying everything. You know, I was I was talking to someone. I hopped on BetterHelp. I I, I talked to a therapist, and you know, I, I tried everything that weekend, Damon. And the one thing that was, and it was this cool experience of I, I felt a little bit better after this meditation. You know, just letting everything mm-hmm. go out, and it felt like I could start. I I. I I reestablished a connection somehow. It sounds very funny. I've never talked to the to anybody about this to this level. I don't think, but. And and it, and it's something had changed at that point. And then I kept doing it. And I kept meditating. That was the one thing I got out. And I kind of got me out of that funk. And other things happened. And I, and I worked on it. And I think just opening up to people and being honest about what I was feeling, like you said, mm-hmm. I, I grew up with emotions were not something you talked about. And you bottled it up. You bottled it up until you snapped on everybody you love. Mm-hmm. Right. That was kind of the <laughs> thing that was shown to you. That's how you deal with emotions. Right. So that was what I was stuck in. And uh, then after the fact, I found that not only did meditation help me feel better, but that's exactly that. I would meditate and I'd come up all of a sudden this problem at work, I could not figure out of how we're going to fix this big, huge problem at work. And then I'd meditate. And somehow at the end of it, I didn't come up with the answer. And it was like magic. And you know, I almost didn't want to talk about it because it seemed so silly. I didn't want to bring it up to anybody, but I kept doing that. And then I think in, in meditating, I came up with the idea of like, you got to start a podcast, you idiot, right? Like mm. it came out of that and it all came out of that. And it was, you know, just slowing your mind down enough. And I think what that is, is we have so many, you're always on your phone. You're always on social media. There's always something happening. I'm the worst for it. I, I love podcasts so much that I, from the time I wake up in the morning to the time I go to bed and I'm trying to be working on this lately because I don't think that's healthy either. But for three years building up until I started my podcast, if I wasn't doing something where I needed to talk to somebody, there was podcasts on all the mm-hmm. time on two times, three times speed. I was taking it. I loved it. It changed my life. And that's what started the real journey of loving myself. And that's where I heard all these powerful people that, you know, change the way I look at things and, and, and all of that. But uh, even backing it up further than that is to hear you say uh, that you're not religious and then give that beautiful speech about the universe and how you feel about it. And it's so funny because I, I, I couldn't agree with you more about the universe and how it speaks and how we're all connected within that. But I, the, I was opened up to that realization through the lens of religious, mm-hmm. of, of religion, mm-hmm. sorry. And I don't think, I wouldn't even say I'm religious, but I, I grew up religious, uh, you know, not, not to a very, you know, by the time I was a teenager, my, my parents realized that wasn't for me and, and, and stopped pushing it and, and kind of let me do my own thing. But I had always had this, like religion was nothing to me because the way it was brought to me was you can't ask questions. You can't mm-hmm. do all this stuff. And it just really didn't connect with me. And I was like, this is religion. Oh, that's stupid. So I wrote it off. And I, and not only did I write it off, but I wrote off people that had any, got any good out of it, which is such a stupid thing to do. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and now when I look back on that, writing off anything that people get good out of is such a stupid thing to do because if anybody can get any sort of good out of it, it's not all bad. Right. Mm-hmm. But then finding podcasts and finding people like Aubrey Marcus and like Pete Holmes and, and these people that are religious, but s- spiritual religious mm-hmm. and, and uh, learn in all religions and find the, 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 the common threads throughout Buddhism and Christianity and, 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 uh, and, and all these things. And I found that's what it was that when the big things is that um, 
um, God or whatever you think God is, is in everyone. We are all God. God mm-hmm. is in everything. Um, we are all connected. All those kind of running things, right? It's not to say that I had a, that made me religious, but it got me back in touch with my spiritual side, right? And I was already kind of opening up to the emotional side, but then letting that spiritual side into it, I feel like it opened me up to so many options because I was so locked down on that one thing that this is silly. Anybody that believes this is silly, mm-hmm. it was closing me off to a whole range of things that I could do. And then when I let that in, it was such an amazing experience to see this flood and then see things start to fall into place. Like you say, and just how you had to go down into that darkest moment to find that, to then climb back out of it. And it was so, uh, it's such a experience. I get goosebumps talking about it. Right? Like it was just so, so cool. But I, but just to, I guess in in my uh, roundabout way of saying, I couldn't agree with you more about the universe and talking to it and being open to it. And mm-hmm. and and I think that's a message that everybody needs is just to take moments in their day to find quiet. Right? Meditation doesn't need to be for everybody, but you can find your own version of quiet. Whether it's a walk where you don't take your phone, you go for a twenty minute walk without your phone. Mm-hmm. Right? That's quiet. You you, you know, a little bit of stretching uh, before you go to bed. That's quiet. You can find quiet in all these places, but it is such an important piece. Right? Is to mm-hmm. have that quiet and find that place where you can kind of reconnect it's almost that mind body connection we're working on it's that mind body spirit you talked about finding the connection to the spirit by connecting the mind and the body but i think it's almost something where reattaching any connection can start to reattach others you know mm-hmm. what i mean maybe somebody finds spirit first and that's what reattaches you know reignites the connection with their body right exactly it can fall in anything but i think but i think with a profession like yours where you can you know like you said, exercise, I heard you say earlier that exercise is a good first step, but it's not everything. Right. Mm-hmm. But I think that's what I found too, Dan, was, was by taking on the physical, um, goals and, and, and physical stresses, it, it helps open you up and set you on that positive momentum to open the doors to these other things. And then you start to find them. So is that something that you try and, uh, and bring up with, with the people that you bring on with, with, with your, uh, with your personal training? Um, so sorry, what, what, what's the question? So I, I just, I, it was just pretty much, if I'm honest with you, I just was talking too long and I tried to throw it to a question without actually thinking it through. That was the honest uh, <laughs> question. But I think I was just trying to say um, how much, to what degree, because I think I think we both uh, have very deep thoughts on, on, on the universe and stuff, but how do you package that into mm. a digestible way that somebody that wants to come to you to make you know noticeable changes in their life, how do you make that digestible to them mm. so it doesn't scare them off, but they can start to see the benefits of it and start to trust you more so you can take them deeper down that rabbit mm. hole of maybe more of the... I don't want to call it spiritual, you know, whatever side it is, but just mm-hmm. the the non physical side, I guess. Absolutely. So, like, like you said, like I don't want to scare them off, so I don't, I don't jump into it right away. Um, if I feel mm-hmm. like there's a connection there, and I feel like this person can, like, mm-hmm. I guess, handle it, if that's the right thing to say, right. Right. Um, yeah, then absolutely, I'll I'll start talking about it right away. But for the most part, mm-hmm. I just let it happen naturally. Um, what when it comes to training people and it comes to changing their lives most people are kind of starting fresh like they have no idea about what macronutrients are they have no idea about what Mm -hmm. what uh caloric intake even means they don't know what metabolism is they don't know these things they don't understand these things Mm -hmm. so when you get a brand new person you need to very slowly introduce new habits you can't throw everything at them at right. once and if i if i got a new client come in and i just start talking about the universe and everything's connected they're yeah, they're, yeah, they're, yeah. they're gonna be confused they're gonna be lost of who the fuck is this guy like i'm like i didn't yeah. come here for this so yeah, it, exactly. it's it's for me it really depends on the person but for the most part i mm-hmm. I, I really focus on the training aspect of it first and mm-hmm. then depending if it's a good fit depending if again it really depends on the person but then yeah. it, then it, i move into more of the mindset stuff because I, I i i really got to be i'd like set that boundary like like you were saying earlier like i got to set boundaries and i got to set boundaries with myself as well and i got to mm-hmm. remember that i'm not a therapist i'm a i'm a, I'm a personal yeah. trainer i can't sit here and listen to person's problems all day and try and diagnose them and try and tell them what they're supposed to do and all these things all i can really do is tell them about my experience and tell them how i dealt with it tell them how i handled it um, offer them tools that i used to get through through similar situations um yeah so that's what i kind of do is i kind of i really just start on so i guess when it comes to training i really just focus on the the body part and i i i I focus on getting them to move properly. I teach them how to Mm -hmm. feel the muscles that are supposed to be felt. I, and I I was actually going to bring this up earlier. Breathing, breathing is a huge thing. 
Oh, yeah. And breathing is the first thing I, I really teach people is how to br- uh, properly breathe and be conscious when you breathe. And I feel like things like meditation, you are consciously and actively thinking about your breathing. And that's what yeah. brings value into the med- meditation. Same thing with training. Mm-hmm. Except when you're training and you're working out, you're, you're, you're breathing and you're breathing heavily, but it's a little bit it's a little bit less indirect and it's, it's, you're mm-hmm. not, you're not consciously thinking about your breathing, but if you are, yeah. then that's going to clear the mind. You're going to feel much better. And yeah. I, are you familiar with Shea, Jay Shetty? Jay Shetty. That name doesn't ring a bell. Okay. So that's another guy you got to, you got to, that's another guy you got to yeah, check okay, out. Okay. Um, so okay. he actually just released a book. It's called think like a monk. And this guy is, phenomenal phenomenal mind and um the the interesting the interesting thing about jay shetty is that he he's probably like in his mid-30s a pretty young guy Mm -hmm. uh he's a an indian guy like east indian grew up in britain Mm -hmm. um and like became like a businessman became quite successful and then like he was kind of like in the party scene and stuff and then he met he met a monk uh, a shaolin monk so he he wow. moved to India and he became a monk. He I think he was I think he was there for like four or five years. So he lived with the monk for four or five years and like the, um so yeah tremendous guy check him out. Um anyways what I, what I'm what I'm getting to is back to the breath. What he says is the very mm-hmm. first thing they teach monks is how to properly breathe. And yeah. even like he said it like his first day in like the monk school or whatever you want to call it or whatever it's called. Mm-hmm. Um. He said there is a group of like four or five year old kids and they're just learning how to properly breathe. And that's the very first thing they learn. Mm-hmm. So one, that just shows you how important breath is to help with like the mindset and help clear the mind and all that stuff. Um, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Breathing is super important. And yeah, <laughs> that's all I got to say about that. Yeah, no, I, I have you. So have you ever read, uh, read this book, Damon breath by David Nestor or by James Nestor? Sorry. I haven't. No. He was also on Joe Rogan. He, he was also on Joe Rogan a couple weeks ago. So I think I'd actually heard on a different podcast that James Nestor was going to be on Rogan. Uh, and I thought, Oh, I've really wanted to dive into breath work. Cause I was always really interested in Wim Hof and, and I always was really interested in tumor breathing. And actually, um, I read this, uh, this golf book called, uh, golf's Holy war, the battle for, Battle for the Soul in the Game in uh, a Technological Era or something like that. And it was this incredible book. I kind of just bought it on a whim. I saw I saw this this author on Twitter that uh, had released a golf book. And uh, he he was really into this one physicist I, I really like. And I love his podcast. I was like, oh, I like golf. And he, he likes this podcast. And it's, he's not a huge writer or nothing. You know, I'll give the chance on this book just kind of out of whim. Again, one of those things I just get weird feelings about things. Like the universe is telling me to read this book. And it was incredible. It was so up my alley in so many of these ways. Um, and it really talked about breathing. So when I heard that uh, this James Nestor guy was going to be on Rogan, I thought, oh, well, he's probably one of the high, you know, if he's going on Rogan, he's got to be one of the best guys for breath. So I ordered his book. And then he came on Rogan. And I was honestly a little disappointed. It was a very interesting, but I feel like I built it up so much in my head about how I, I was already so conscious about how important breathing was that I almost didn't connect enough with the podcast. So I, I, I didn't read the book right away. And then I read this book, Damon, and it changed my life. Mm-hmm. Like, realizing how I didn't realize how important breathing was and all these different, all these different breath styles that can do different things for your body. And I've been working that in now I've combined uh, the breath work with the meditation and the breath work with, uh, with my yoga and and my stretching and and, and my workouts and and trying to do all my cardio only nose breathing. I try and because I used to, I used to think Damon that I could never, I thought I couldn't breathe through my nose from the time I was probably 15 to the time I was 26. I'm 26 now, but you know, five months ago, uh, I think I, I think I read the book in maybe June. Mm. No, I, I, I read it mid August. So what, what's that? What? No, early August. Anyway, but two months that mm. I've been breathing. I thought until that point, I could just not breathe through my nose. I thought I was always plugged up. I thought that was just how it worked. But I, but in reading this book, they talk about the importance of nose breathing and that mm. that's the fact your airways and our, our actual physiology has changed because of how much we breathe through our mouths. And it actually goes back to, um, when we're, when we're, uh, when we're infants, when we're babies, we, we have so many stages of soft food that we don't actually start to build up our jaw muscles. That's why you see a very predominant look these days is that sunk back jaw look where it kind of pulls back and the, and, and you don't have that big push forward prominent jaw and thinning of the faces. Mm-hmm. It's because of, of, of that issue, but that affects all our airways. So it makes it very hard to breathe through our nose and you have to actually work on that. But if you do, 
I my my actual nose like you can see the difference. My nose looks different mm-hmm. now because I I've actually opened up my airways and stuff, and now I can I can run a full you know I run ten k every day and I don't take a breath through my mouth mm-hmm. right. And that took a bit of time. The first couple of days I tried that, it was a struggle. Yeah, <laughs> and I was gonna... wheezing and looked like I was yeah I looked like a rookie out there, but it, but it really changed so much. And and then I I started buying the mouth tape. I now sleep with my mouth tape shut, so I breathe through my nose, and it has breath has changed my life, Damon. Like it is so important. I'm so glad to hear that you work that in your practice because uh, it's it's just so important. And I feel like so much of my journey has been, there were things that I'd learned, but they never connected me with me enough uh, in a way where I'd actually make that change, right? It didn't resonate with me. There, there was this, uh, another important podcast I listened to, and this is going to go down a different rabbit hole, but they, it was, it was uh, the Lex Friedman podcast who I talk about mm-hmm. all the time. He's probably my second favorite guy after Rogan. He's just mm-hmm. uh, the, one of my big inspirations, but he had a guy on, they were talking about uh, AI. He's, he's a, he's an AI researcher mm-hmm. and, and another area that I really love. I love AI and everything to do with it, but they're talking about the big issue they're having with teaching AI like they're trying to build a human brain, but they're, they're struggling in all these different ways. And one of the big things they're finding is there's a big difference between just data learning and like being taught something um, almost like a, like a vocabulary learning. And then there's an experiential learning. And I find that that's so much, you can sit in a classroom and have someone read it just to put it in your field, nutrition fact, right? You can read macros and all that stuff, and you can have, but it, it's going in one ear and out the other, and you're not actually applying it. And the people that leave that classroom aren't going to apply anything because it didn't connect with them. It didn't, it didn't show them the importance. It didn't, you know, light that up and i feel like that's exactly what this breath book did i'd heard that breath was important i'd read that i wouldn't have ordered the book if i didn't think it was important enough people that i listened to that i respected had talked about the importance of breathing but i'd never really given it that uh that second shot and then once you read something like that it's amazing and then you find all these people where you go man breath is is amazing they go yeah obviously and they and they know all these things already but there's so many people that have found have found this through yoga i find that uh you know when i used to go to yoga i always thought this isn't enough workout for me it's not it's it's not all that good and stuff and i just i wasn't doing it right and another thing that you had mentioned that i think is a game changer and i and i love hearing it from you is uh really showing you had just mentioned it in passing but showing people exactly what muscle they should be feeling when doing a workout mm-hmm. i find that that is such a big change for myself. Um, I'll, I'll just use the yoga example. His is the perfect. So I, I've probably done until the last uh, month, I'd probably done maybe 15 yoga classes in my life, right? I'd done some hot yoga. I'd done some, I wasn't opposed to it. And I liked the workout. The thing I didn't like about it, Dane, was I just feel like I didn't get enough of a workout in that hour. I feel like if I'm going to designate an hour, I'm super efficiency minded. I just felt like I could go for a hard run for an hour and get burn way more calories. And I like the stretching I'm going to get, but I don't want to waste an hour stretching. I feel like I'd rather do like a 20 minute dedicated stretch and then a, and then a run. Mm-hmm. So I never really connected with it. But I think one thing I wasn't understanding was the importance of the breath. Mm-hmm. One thing I... I felt like the the teachers were so focused on uh, connecting you with other things that are also important. And I didn't realize them, but I started uh, doing, I hurt my knee a couple of weeks ago and I couldn't run. So I started doing uh, DDP yoga. Have you ever heard of that? Uh, Diamond Dallas page yoga? No, I haven't. I'll have to check that out. So he, yeah, so he he's uh he's been on Rogan a couple of times if you want to and he's awesome on there. He, so Diamond Dallas Page is in a WWE wrestler right back in the day. He was one of the big wrestling. So I was never a big wrestling guy, so I didn't really know who this guy was, but um he, his body was so banged up from all the wrestling over the years, right? He, he, his knees were hooped, his back was hooped. He could barely get out of bed. So he started, found yoga and started to put his own twist on it because it was a little too, uh, you know, fancy for him. So he put his own names on all the poses, started to add in uh, push ups, squats into it and, and made kind of a, a more manly type of yoga that he puts. He doesn't, he likes calling it DDPY, DDP, you know, Diamond Dallas Page yoga, but because he doesn't even like the word yoga because it's very much not your traditional yoga. Mm-hmm. But I, what I found I got out of him was he was so, much less concentrated on the breath and the other things, which is bad in its own right. And I'm glad I found breath otherwise. But what he was so good at is really in plain terms, telling you where you should be feeling. I found there was yoga poses I would do in regular yoga Mm -hmm. that I was not even doing correctly because he didn't, he didn't, I didn't experientially understand what I was trying to get out of the stretch or out of that movement. And I feel like that's so much, I didn't realize. And then I go do a yoga with my girlfriend at a regular Bikram class. And now I understand what I'm trying to do in these poses and the workout. And I get a way better workout. Now, if I do an hour hot yoga with that, understanding what I'm supposed to be doing, mm-hmm. I'm getting a wicked workout, but it was all just because I didn't understand what I was trying to do. And I think that's so much with uh, physical education is we just assume if it's natural to us or everybody has different, uh, different levels of that mind body connection and, and just, will will basically understand what a movement is, right? You curl, you know where it's supposed to pull, you know kind of how to do it, but everybody has different levels that some people have no idea. And you really need to break it down, you know, step-by-step step where you should be feeling it on the, on the, on the incline, on the decline, right? Like so many of these things are so important. And I think a lot of trainers don't realize that importance and, and 
they're doing their their students a disservice by not really breaking it down, right? So I was so glad to hear that. The breath, I mean, it's it, it's funny uh, talking about the universe and stuff because I had such a funny feeling even before uh, that I needed to have you on that we connect on a lot of stuff. But then the more we say, the more I just want to keep ranting. Like I said at the start, I was hoping you'd get a couple words in because I knew I was going to be uh, going on my rants here. But no, that's awesome. So where did where did you find uh, like uh, the importance of the breath and all this? Like, is that mostly podcasts? Is that reading? Like, where, where did you get to all this knowledge? I'm, I'm amazed by how much knowledge you have, like every step of the way. But uh, where did you come up with all this? Um, it's 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 just like a number of different things. It's kind of I'll try and explain it the best I can. So if I yeah. if I read a book or if I listen to a podcast, I'll I'll retain a few things. And if you ask me how is that book, I'd be able to tell you maybe one, two, maybe three things if you're lucky of what I learned through that book. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I'm not very good at reading a book and then kind of saying what happened or what what I read in that book. I, what what I'm starting to learn is that when I read books or when I listen to podcasts, I might not remember. Let's say I finished a book three days ago and you're like, oh, what did you read? I might be like, oh, fuck, man, what did I read? And then there's a, one thing that stands out and I just talk about that. And yeah. It sounds like I know this book so well, but realistically, it's one thing out of a 500 book, a 500 page book. There's one thing that I completely mm-hmm. remember. But what I've what I'm what I'm starting to realize is that I'm I guess I'm downloading that information into my subconscious yes. mind. And I when I mm-hmm. need that information, it's available to me. And it's like all of a sudden, it's like kind of like that remembering thing where it's like you remember something and it's like, okay, yeah. well, like I know this. Yeah. It's like I oh, you know what? I read mm-hmm. this in this book five years ago. And now same mm-hmm. thing with the podcast. Like I'll listen to a podcast and it's like, okay, I'll pick up a couple of things that I'll be able to like use right away. And then like three months later, a year later, all of a sudden it's like, yeah, I, I, something happens and it's like, I need this. And it's like, okay, this is kind of cool. Like now it's, it's almost like yeah. I'm connecting the dots of everything that I've learned in the past. You slowly start to connect the dots and kind of, it, it, it creates like, just imagine like you have a painting, like, you know, those color, color by dots paintings where it's like, you like yeah. draw the lines yeah. and it's like, okay, this is starting to look like mm-hmm. a picture. It's kind of like the same thing where it's like I'm connecting all these dots of in- information that are the more I read and the more I listen to, it's starting to be clear and it's starting to make more sense. So it's like I don't yeah. really know where the breath work stuff came in. I'm sure it probably started somewhere um, with my actual like uh, the, the personal training courses that I took, like through that certification. Right. That's probably where right. it started. But all that information was so new to me that it didn't like stick right off the bat where it's like I was probably more concerned about how to properly do a squat or how to properly do a bench rep. Mm-hmm. Right. Then as right. I, as I continued going as I, and I, as I continued to learn now, it's like, like Jay Shetty talks about, Oh, the first thing they teach monks is how to breathe. So it's like, okay, mm-hmm. I know about breathing. I, I remember my teachers in, in, in school teaching me how to breathe properly. Now I have this like ex monk telling me how important breath work is. And it's like, now I'm starting to connect those dots mm-hmm. and it's like, yeah. So it's it's not really one thing that that was like, oh, breathwork is so important. It's 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 a number of different things. And there's probably things that I'm I don't even remember that subconsciously are in there and it's just like have yeah. helped create this picture. For sure. And it's so funny to hear someone uh so so uh, elegantly describe that because that's something that I felt and I feel like it's something I've been scared to talk about because I didn't know the right way to say it but hearing someone I feel like just hearing you say that is the same way because I think that was something I graduated from university I did four years at this university and I felt like I learned nothing mm-hmm. I came out of it I went back to work and I was I was working uh in Slave Lake uh for my dad you know doing stuff in the office kind of and, and I was doing a good job but I wasn't really Pressure in that, and then I found podcasts. And you know, while I'm doing spreadsheets and stuff, I'd be downloading that stuff. And I would exactly that that feeling. And then months later, this piece would pop up, and I found, holy shit! Like I'm, I learned so much just from like listening podcasts passively. And and it, you don't realize what you learn until you need it. Mm-hmm. But it was so cool. And that light bulb is what really set me off on that path of I need to consume as many of these podcasts from the right people because if you can get the right person, um in the right type of mind that's around you. It's like surrounding, it's like surrounding yourself with friends that have these super high IQs, right? When you can listen to physicists and, mm. uh, and, and, and these accomplished writers and all these people, that's, that, that's your, almost your social circle. That's what it becomes. You pick up on things like that. And that's what I found. And that's when I started to see the successes of that and what that did for me and how much I was leveling up. I was leveling up and I, I felt like 
I got onto this path where I didn't even recognize myself three months ago, right? And I felt like it was such a cool experience of I'm learning so much so quickly now that, and 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 then applying it at work. And I think I started to show people at work like, oh man, I'm, and I think they just thought it was the natural progression of, oh, you went to school, you kind of take some time to find yourself and then more and more. But I just find that is where the real core of uh, what my addiction to podcasts is, is that 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 content. I want to learn all these things all the time in audio books and that, and, and the faster I can listen to them, right? If I can listen to this on three times speed and I can, comprehend it you know not everything you can listen to on three times speed right that's more of the some of the comedy ones or maybe the little more fluff or some people i know their voices really well i can listen to them faster mm-hmm. but even 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 the ones that are really complicated like listen to math lectures and stuff you can listen to them on 1.5 and mm-hmm. and a three-hour lecture is now two hours and mm-hmm. that is that is a huge efficiency gain and it's so cool to hear someone say that of just exactly that i almost felt like i i feel like this is cocky to say and it, and it sounds silly but one of the things that gave me confidence to do a podcast is it felt like before I started my podcast, the three or four years before that was just constantly downloading my favorite podcasters and always mm-hmm. intaking that. I feel like I was just a terminator, just downloading all this stuff of how to be the best best podcaster I could be. And I felt like, oh, I got to got to keep taking this all this in. And then one day, some magical thing's going to happen. I'm going to stop a bank robbery. I'm going to be wearing my JRE shirt. They're going to interview me, and I'm going to get on Joe Rogan. I'll be able to start my podcast, and I'll and I'll be I'll, I'll take the world by storm because everyone's going to see, holy man, this guy knows how does he know all this stuff? You know, all these podcasts and these little facts and, 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 and all this information. And then it hit me where I had to get to that low point and realize why am I sitting around fantasizing about some magical unicorn flying by and gifting me a podcast mm-hmm. when I, when I've already shown that I can, I can, I can grow a business. I, I have acumen. I have all these skills that I've put together and I've shown in my life and I, and I can't, and I'm sitting here waiting for something good luck to happen. Like, fuck that. I'm starting my own. And from that point forward, that's when things snapped and started to change and things started to fall into place. And, and it was such a, a cool experience to do that but it was like all that work that i was doing in the past that i didn't even realize i was doing at first it, it almost felt like i was i was getting drug along by some sort of thing i didn't even know it was almost like i wasn't even planning this it was just kind of i was on these tracks and the universe was taking me somewhere i didn't realize where i was going but eventually all these things started to make sense and then all that work i'd put in for years of 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 you know intaking all these podcasts at this crazy rate and audiobooks and learning and and, and doing that work on myself to to find out the things i i dislike about myself where those come from and trying to forgive myself for those i found like that was such a you know and then those all start to feed back on each other right as you start to work on yourself you can be better with others you can you know be better with with others at work and be more understanding and and help Mm. you know make deeper connections and it all just feeds back on itself and it it starts to grow and and build the momentum and i think that's so cool to hear that that story that i just said is almost described in exactly how you said you 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 build up your, your clients right you just start with the basics of just working out physical there's not much more to it right if you come here i'll put you through a workout you don't need to know two plus two or, or red plus green what that makes right you don't need to know nothing you come here you're going to get a workout mm-hmm. that's your first good habit that's the first thing you build and then we can build upon that it might be one little thing here and there and then we build and we build mm-hmm. and before the client almost doesn't even realize all oh, you're building for them until they're a certain amount of steps and everybody realizes that at different places and and sometimes that light bulb will go off for that person of holy man i've made that change and sometimes it takes that look in the mirror and seeing the physical results for that bell to go off sometimes you don't even need that i'm sure you'll see clients that get it from day one that you know they come in almost with all these realizations almost and you're just there to help you know make sure they don't fall off the tracks right everybody's different but it, i bet you that would be a super rewarding experience so i guess that would be my question something i when i first started this podcast i wanted to ask people damon was uh if you could get paid to do anything, what would you do? Because I feel like for myself, if I could get paid to do anything, just a living and just, you know, be my happiest self I could be, it would just be the podcast all day. And I could do this and I could be, if I could make money doing this, I'd be the happiest camper and I could, you know, everything could be falling wrong. But if this is what I got to do for a living, I'd love it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and it sounds like you've built for yourself that, uh, that aspect. And I'm just wondering, is that kind of how you see what you're doing right now? Would, is there anything else you'd want to do? And if not, how does that feel to know that you've built this for yourself exactly what you want to be doing? Is that a pretty cool feeling? Absolutely, man. And I I, I think like, yeah, like answering that question is difficult because I do feel like I am, if I get paid to do anything, it's like, I feel like I am already doing it. Um, mm-hmm. The only thing would be is I would want to make it more scalable. And what I mean by that right. is I would yeah. want to be able to help more people with less like with without trading my time yeah. um, so that I can For sure. that, so that I can express my time elsewhere on 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 bigger. Things. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I feel like I am I'm doing what I want to be doing. And I feel like to answer your question, yes, I feel like I'm getting I'm getting paid to do what I want to do. And I, I, I fucking mm-hmm. love it. <laughs> 
Yeah, that's awesome. And and, and then another piece of that kind of in, in hearing your goals of what you'd want to do in scalability, I think I think a huge piece of that would be your podcast. And and then uh, and like I said right at the start, I was really impressed with your podcast and just I was impressed with your insights and and your, and your own journey. And I found that. I really liked all your podcasts, but that one you did uh, with just yourself and just talking and, and was just purely your thoughts. You're a good interviewer too, but I was just very blown away. And I wonder, um, just, you don't have to answer this, but it seems like the last releases a while ago, has that fallen off a bit? Cause I think you do an amazing job and I'd love to see you. You, you know, it, it almost hurt me to see that you hadn't kept released cause I wanted more, right? I almost listened to every episode you had today and I wanted more. So mm-hmm. is that something you have planned to fire back up and get more regular or what happened with that, I guess. Yeah, gosh. absolutely. So a hundred percent, I'm going to get back to doing it. It's just uh, so, mm-hmm. a few things happened. Um, so we had a, we had a baby in May, so he's four months old now. So the, uh, that's Congrats. a lot of time. Thank you. For sure. Um, and then, so in June is when I opened up the gym or mm-hmm. I didn't open up the gym. Um, my, my, my buddy Cody opened up the gym and I hopped in there with him. So, I'm just like kind of using his space. I'm running my own business out of his space. So I kind of shifted my focus towards that. I was still trying mm-hmm. to do the podcast at the same time, but I felt I was, I was burning myself out. I was getting a little bit overwhelmed. Yeah. Um, and then I'm also at the same time trying to shift my business online um, so that I can have mm, a combination okay. of both. So it was kind of like I had a lot going on at the same time and I just had to really like set my priorities straight and decide Okay, like what do I really want to focus on? Obviously, okay, my son, mm-hmm. my son's going to be the number one priority, and then it's sure. going to be like my in person training, and then it's going to be building that online mm-hmm. business. So the podcast just kind of got pushed to the side. Um, but absolutely, one hundred percent, I'm going to get back on that. And and having having you invite me onto your podcast is actually going to drive me into and, and push me into starting mine up again, and and to bring on more guests and 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 have that going again. Just because now, yeah. I, I, well, some, now I know that I have the time. Like yeah. I know I can do it. I, I, I mm-hmm. needed that push. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And everybody needs that push from different people and things. And, and that's what I think is so cool. I just had this funny feeling that I had to have you on and, and, and I've done that a couple of times with people where even they're like, why, why do you want to have me on? I'm just, just trust me. Like I feel, and those have been some of my best episodes. And I just think it's funny that I think like you did need that push. And I think I needed to, uh, you know, listen to your podcast and give you that push because I, I was honestly very impressed with it. And, uh, and I, and I, and I just, uh, I think that's a huge piece and I think you're doing so much work and I think, uh, for sure there's other priorities that come up, but I think you may be undervaluing the effect you can have because honestly, that I think just that one podcast alone really was impactful to me. And I think I took a lot out of that day. And I think it, you know, I had goosebumps driving, I was driving from one office to the other today, listen to it. I had goosebumps, man. Like I, I think you, uh, I think you can really connect with some people and really, and really make a change. So I really hope you do. And I, you know what, when, when you say it, I can see the conviction in your eyes. So I'm not worried about it, but you know, like if, uh, if there's anything I can help to do to blow your podcast up, you know, I mean, I'd, uh, promote it on here and actually an idea I had, I'll run it by you. And I mean, we can cut this out if we don't want to put this out or if we decide not to do it, but an idea I had, you know, like I'm not trying to make money on this. An idea I had is, uh, when I finish this audio file, just cut the cut the intro and outro off it and record your own, and we'll do it. Release it on yours too, right? Mm-hmm. We could do it as a podcast because you're asking me as many questions as I'm asking you, right? Like we can do it both ways. That's I think that's the beauty of especially when I'm not trying to make money with this yet. Like I'm just trying to grow it and have fun with it and and, and get better at it. That's when you have the opportunity to mm-hmm. do things like that. Where if I see some, that nothing would give me more pleasure than to to help you get that kick started and give it another you know kick in the pants to make that another big piece of yours mm-hmm. because. Uh, I think you're very talented and I think, uh, I think there's a lot of people that would get a lot of, uh, a lot of benefit out of that. And I just see if you're already, if you're already doing so much with just, uh, how early you are in your journey, I'm, I get so excited to see where you are, uh, later on. Mm-hmm. Like, like I said earlier that Lex Friedman, right. He's maybe early thirties and, and he's this amazing mind working at the top of AI and, and, just I sit there and think sometimes, man, imagine what I'm going to be listening to on his podcast in 10 years when he's Mm -hmm. 42 and, and, and has so much more experience. I think the same thing with guys like you, I just, I think the limit, I think I, when you, when you get a taste of the potential you have, when you understand what you can do with that trick, we talked about the ego of, if you want to, you know, if you want to call it manifestation, if you want to, you know, law of attraction, there's a million names for Mm -hmm. this, you know, but when you, touch that and see what the power it can do for yourself. And then you see other people that are on a similar track. And I think that's almost what drew, drew me to knowing I had to have you on. Cause I could see that you had tapped into that a little bit. Right. And it, it's, it's almost people on the, that same journey. And I think that is limitless. And as long as you don't give up and you keep grinding, I think you're going to do amazing things. Mm-hmm. And I think that's 
almost a big piece of this podcast was so cool is to watch that. And, you know, you listen to hours and hours and I always thought, what are the common threads between these people? What are successful? That's how I got into meditation, right? That I kept hearing these people, TM, 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 transcendental mm-hmm. meditation. All these people I think are amazing. You know, Jerry Seinfeld, uh, these, these physicists, these, these, all these amazing comedians, they all talk about this meditation thing. So I have kind of a rule. If I hear something from too many people I respect and I haven't given it the full, I need to mm. you know, dedicate some time and really dive into this thing and find it. Same with the breath work stuff too. And I feel like in doing that, maybe I haven't exactly fleshed out what that common thread between all these people I admire on these hundreds of thousands of hours of podcasts I've listened to. But I feel like in doing my own podcast and, and talking about it and banning it about, you're, you're finding what that is. And I think a huge piece of it is people that have tapped into that that mindset of I can do whatever, as long as I keep grinding, I keep putting it and I, and I care and I put that passion behind it, I can take this to whatever level I want. And I think that is so cool to surround yourself with those people. And then you can create an environment where now other past guests can, if I can start to connect other past guests that have uh, that same drawn, that same fire that you do and help you guys help each other. And I can help in any way I can, and we can start building up. You can just almost create, and it's very similar to what Joe Rogan did, right? All these comedians, these people that he had and helped them start their own podcast and built up an empire of that. I see that very much. And then you get to see the happiness that he gets from having his favorite people around him all the time. And he's helped so many people along the way that he's just surrounded himself with love. And I think that as chintzy as it sounds to say, but I think that is one of the biggest common threads is the people I love are the people that come at everything from a place of love. Lex Friedman, Joe Rogan, uh, all these people, like at the very end, they may be very massive. They may, you know, train MMA, but they're very much centered in love and love themselves and, and talk about loving others. And I feel like it's so growing up uh, in Slave Lake, love was not a very uh, bandied about topic. And I think that was a shame because I think in the last couple of years, I've realized the power of love, you know, and, and what that can do and loving yourself. And that was the biggest thing. I couldn't lose weight because I didn't think I deserved to lose mm-hmm. weight. I, 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 I was angry at myself and, and I didn't love myself. And, and there'd be times where I think I'd kind of have that licked. And then you find a whole nother area where you're still not loving yourself completely. And I'm not, but at least the difference is recognizing that as a goal before I didn't recognize self love. I'd never experientially seen the power that loving yourself could have. I'd heard that that was important, but I'd never really experienced it. And I think that was the biggest change that I saw Dan was realizing the impact of actually trying to love yourself, even if you can't accomplish it, even if it's going to take you 40 years of working on to try and love yourself, just that simple act of recognizing it as important and trying to prioritize that wherever that prioritized, wherever that priority falls, as long as it's on your board of priorities, Mm -hmm. you can move it up and down. But I feel like that is a big shift as well as, uh, is recognize that yourself. So maybe I'll split that back to you is, Throughout your journey, at what point did your realization of the impact, because I've heard you on some other podcasts talk about in your own words of uh, the impact of self-love and what that has on yourself and your clients, at what point did the the, the importance of that fully make its impact in your mind? Mm-hmm. Uh, so hold on, hold on, hold on to that question. Um, first of all, first off, like, yeah, absolutely. I'd love to, I'd love to share this podcast on my, on my own podcast as well. Um, it's something you see often. Oh, for sure. I think I think yeah. it's uh, I think it's something like if 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 two two people who have a podcast get together and they 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 share it they share it on both and kind of reach yeah. and get to as many people as possible. So yeah, absolutely, I'd love to do that. Mm-hmm. And then the second thing I wanted to mention is you're talking about um, Lex Friedman. He's thirty. He's in his thirties. Thirty two. I think you said ten years from now he's going to be forty. Yeah, he's going to big. That. Um, and that's kind of like, I'm excited for that. Like, I, I, I love that. And yeah. I'm 28 now I'm two years away from being 30. And I know a lot of people who, who are afraid of that. Oh, I'm going to be 30. Oh my God. What am I going to mm-hmm. do? Like my, my world is ending. Yeah. And it's like, I'm fucking excited, man. Like 30, like I'm, I'm 28 now. I've been doing this for maybe three years and like, I, 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 I feel like I'm doing really well. And I feel like. I've grown so much. Mm. So it's like when I'm 30, like, where am yeah. I going to be? Like, I'm going to be, I'm so excited to be yeah. at 30. And I'm, I'm like, it's like, I, I always say, and I always look back on my own life. And I feel like when I hit 25, it was almost like I was reborn. Um, I was, I was reborn mm-hmm. as a completely different person at 25 years old. I completely changed. And it's like, now, if I look at it that way, I'm still an infant in my new life, I guess, if you want to call it that yeah. as yeah. a new person, I'm For still sure. an infant. And I'm only three years into it. And it's like, where am I going to be when I'm 30? Where am I going to be when I'm 35? Like, I'm excited for this stuff. So I'm, I'm happy you brought that up. Um, anything you want to say on that? 
Oh yeah, I mean a mil- a million things, but I don't know if you'll ever get to get another word in if I start talking <laughs> again. But yeah, no, I mean I'll just do a couple quick things and I'll pivot back to my question about the self love thing. But that was uh, it's so funny to hear you talk about age because I'm so I'm 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 way less so now, but I was always super hung up on age and you know when I was 23, I was trying to look at other what had other people done at 23 and what are people around like. I was always benchmarking myself upon age and what other people had accomplished by that age. And I felt like I was winning because at 23 years old, I was, uh, I had 50 employees. I I was running a, a, a really big chunk of a business that, you know, I had worked really hard and I learned and I busted my ass to get there, but I felt, you know, I didn't have that self love and I, and I, that imposter syndrome is a real son of a bitch. Oh, and I just didn't believe that I, I didn't believe that I deserved it. And I, and I struggled so much with that. And, 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 you know, and I kept, doing that as my goal. But you know what? Like, it doesn't matter because it doesn't matter if I'm happy or not, because I'm winning because at 23 years old, who else is running the companies this side doing this kind of work, you know, being under this amount of stress and all this stuff, you know, I was reframing, I was trying to reframe everything in, the, in that mindset because I thought that was always what my values were based around. I thought that is what's important, all this stuff. And it really hit me to a point where I was doing all that stuff. And I got to that point where I was still doing all that. I'd accomplished even more. I'd taken on these even bigger roles with the business and doing all these more things. And I was depressed as all hell. I'd never been this. I'd never felt that bad about myself. Mm. And I didn't know what it was. It was because I wasn't living my own dream. I wasn't doing what I wanted to do. I wasn't, Mm. right? And the minute I decided to start this podcast, I feel like a huge chunk of that fell away immediately. Mm -hmm. And I felt, I almost felt like a new person because now it doesn't matter because I'm on the path of, uh, I'm, I'm so proud of the three months that I've put in with this podcast and I'm so excited to see what it's going to look like three months from now. And I'm so excited to see what it looks like 10 years from now. Mm-hmm. But the thought of, you know, doing the same job 10 years from now is a terrifying yeah. subject, right? Yeah. But the thought of, the thought of doing this podcast and, and doing it, uh, love it, you know, the thought of doing it at 60 is like the, the coolest thing I can think of. If I could still be doing this yeah. at 60 years old and still be loving it and still be enjoying it, that is the coolest thought I can ever think of, right? And just to think of, of, of those things, I felt like that was such a, a weight falling off your shoulders, just finding something that you do for yourself and that you really enjoy. And I, and I, I found like that was such a, um, an important, an important moment. And then one more thing about that age of just hearing you, uh, feel like at 25, you were reborn and, and you're almost an infant in that. And I think there's a, in, in MMA, there's a very, uh, apt description that they call it the white belt mentality, right? It don't, doesn't matter how accomplished you are in anything. If you can keep that, right? Sometimes um, just the way life works out, it'll do that for you and it'll make you feel that way. But it's an important mindset to keep of just, you're always trying to learn. You're always trying to be in that infancy stage so you can take in all that information. And if you go through life as if you're a white belt in all these different areas and never get too stuck on what you do know, it opens you up to learn so much more because when you're really closed down, just like I was with religion for so many years, I would never let anything, as soon as religion even popped up in the subject, I wrote that off and mm-hmm. locked it in a cage and didn't need to look at that because that's for silly people and then you have a realization you experientially experientially understand religion on a different level through a different person's eyes and now it opens up the floodgates to all these other emotions and all these things you can get out of it, and all these beneficial learnings and this knowledge that was locked away because i would never go look for it right and i just found that that was such a such a big key so feel free to comment on anything of uh, of that nature but then uh, if if not you can uh, I'm still very curious on kind of where, at what point in your life you found the importance of self-love and then maybe some of your journey, because I'm still working on myself. I feel like I, I mm. you know, just that change of realizing that as a priority and that I have to start working on my, on loving myself as a big deal. That was a big change, but I feel like I'm still, I'm still yelling at myself. I'm still, you know, what I'm saying in the mirror isn't what I would want to be saying, but I'm trying to work on it. Right. Mm. So just maybe uh, your own experience with that type of thing. Okay. Um, so for me, I was, you got to think I was almost 300 pounds. So I, my body did not look good by any means. It was like, you know what? I I had the man boobs. I had a huge stomach. I had flabby arms, you know, I had it all right. Um, So when I would look in the mirror, I would focus on the stomach. This is even when I was working out. This is even when I was starting to lose weight, 20, 30 pounds, even I'm still focused on the stomach. And then I had this little bit of a realization. I'm not too sure where or when it happened, but I had this realization that if I focus on, okay, I've been in the gym, uh, you know what, I'm losing some weight. I would go and step on the scale. I'd feel fucking amazing. I'd feel so good. I put in a hard week in the gym and you know, I'm, I'm going to be 10 pounds lighter. There's no way I'm not. Step on the scale. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Step on the scale and it's fucking five pounds more. And it's like, yeah. All that, all that happiness and all that proudness I just yeah. felt just vanished just like that in an instant. Oh. So oh, I know that feeling. And then I'd go back and look in the mirror and I'd be like, you fucking fat, fat piece of shit. And mm-hmm. it would just be mm-hmm. all over again. So what I started to realize is I would start to focus on the areas that I did like. So 
I noticed that my shoulders started to look really good. I noticed that my arms started to look mm-hmm. really good. So I started to really focus on those areas that I liked. Um, mm-hmm. Not the, the I, cause I would, I was always focused on the, on the areas I didn't like. So for example, like my, my face, for example, my eyes, I didn't like my eyes. I hated looking at, at pictures of myself and I would see my eyes and I, I hated it. It's something I learned to love now, but I won't mm-hmm. get into that right now. Um, it's it's just looking for these little areas that you do love about yourself that you do like about yourself mm-hmm. and, and, and yeah. what you're doing in that is you're 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 almost training yourself into loving yourself you're you're you're, you're forced, forcing mm-hmm. yourself to look mm-hmm. at the areas that you do love and then eventually you're going to start to notice that things are going to change your cuz your mindset is changing so you're physically going to start to change yeah you put the training wheels on exactly yeah so so for me it was it, like that was a big big realization and then a few other things, like one of the big things is just the word love. It, it has like a lot of um, like feminine attachment to it. Mm-hmm. And, you yeah. know, as, as a yeah. man, you're not, you're not allowed to feel love. You're not allowed, whatever. Yeah. It, um, mm-hmm. There's a quote and it's about, it's about samurai warriors. And it's about how samurai warriors were in tune with not only the masculine side of themselves, but also that feminine side of themselves. Yeah. Um, so samurai, samurai warriors, which obviously they're warriors, they're, they're pretty badass. What they would do mm-hmm. is to kind of find that balance between the feminine, feminine and the masculine is that they would do origami which is a very delicate mm-hmm. practice, a very feminine practice. Yeah. And like that would help them find that. Yeah. In poetry. In poetry and yeah. all that stuff. And calligraphy. Yeah. They had a bunch exactly. of, uh, a bunch of arts to balance themselves. Yeah. yeah. A little thing that I can say to you to help you. I find I'm always on that path a little bit. And when I'm always keeping an eye out for things in other people, mm-hmm. I find that's one way that I'm always keeping an eye out for those things in myself because so many times I find something, Oh, that person does this. Oh, do I do that? Oh, I do do that. I need to work on that myself. And then the next step from that is oh, where does that come from? Do I get that from my dad? Do I get that from my mom? What was, how did I grow up? And I find that as the, you know, finding it in somebody else, equating it to yourself, taking personal responsibility, and then doing the work to try and find out where it comes. doesn't mean you need to uh, change anything. Even uh, maybe you will want to make a change, but what's more important is just to, um, realize it's there and to, and, and to just bring it to the forefront so that you're, you're not lying to yourself about it. You know, it's there, you know, whether that's good or bad, mm-hmm. you can actually move forward. And, and, and I just find that I've been, uh, getting so much out of this. I feel almost guilty sometimes with the, with my guests, they come on and they give me their time and stuff. And I just feel like I get so much out of it mm-hmm. on, on top of even the content itself that I almost feel guilty asking people on. Cause I'm just, uh, you, you know, something like that. So I was just wondering, I would imagine because when doing a three hour podcast or two hour podcast, even an hour with somebody, you really get to those connections. But I imagine this very similar thing when you, when you, uh, when you drop, uh, uh that much sweat in a gym together and, 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 and take it to these levels and try and bring people to these understanding levels. Um, those are some really deep connections as well. I was just wondering if any part of that you had learned mm. kind of about yourself. I just made that in re asking you that question. I think I made it 20 minutes longer. <laughs> no, for sure. No, I, I, I see what you're saying. And I, yeah, I, I do think that we are like a reflection or other people are a reflection of us in a way and that they, mm-hmm. we they mm-hmm. do mirror something within us. And I, I feel yeah. like when you really pay attention to that, you can learn something about yourself that you might not have learned in, or known in the past. Um, so I think mm-hmm. paying attention to that is super important. And yeah, I think, I think every single person, no matter who they are, has something to teach you. And I think having that mindset is also going to yeah. allow you to grow as a person. Mm-hmm. Um, For sure. With, with, with that being said, I, I, I do have to, I do have to get going. Um, so if we could, if you, if there's anything else you want to ask me or if you want to wrap it up or however you want to end it. Um, for sure. I think, uh, I think maybe I'll, maybe I'll, uh, I'll wrap it up by throwing one last theory and asking one last question at you, if that's all right absolutely. with you. So, so one thing I, I, I feel that I, uh, and definitely you're going to have to be coming on here uh, a couple more times. Cause I have a whole list of questions here that, that I got to ask you and we could do this all day and I, and I'd love to do it. So definitely we'll having you back on soon. So, um, one thing that kind of, it's my own theory and, and I'm sure because I listen to so many things, I very much could have picked this up somewhere and it's not my own words, but something that I find is in whatever you want to call it, um, you know, God or whatever it is, it, it's in everything and everyone, right? We're all the same thing. We're all connected in that way. And I feel like one of the golden rules they always say, you know, do unto others like you want to do unto you, right? Because mm-hmm. in a way that is you, you are me, right? If I say something mean to you, I'm doing that to myself. I'm, I'm, I'm saying 
that that hurt is coming back to me. And I do, I do uh, very, very much believe that. And I find that that's what's so important about keeping the right people in your life because the people that are closest to you, everybody is you, but then because you are that manifestation of just where your mind is just in whatever, if it's an, an incarnation, whatever you want to, whatever story you want to tell surrounding it, when you interact with those people, it's a feedback loop. So mm-hmm. they are also you, but you are the most pure manifestation of you and your, and your mind, right? And, and you actually have things that you can change. You can't control others, but in how your actions affect those around you, they can start to pick up those values. And if you, and if you try to level up everybody around you, and if there's somebody that you can't level up, you just got to cut them out and you, you, you start to feedback. So now things that are affected, and it goes back the same way, those people are affecting you. So if you can help lift up the, everybody around you so that now you're feedbacking with everybody and everybody's, you know, it's a rising tide that's lifting all the boats. Mm-hmm. That's what really makes that change. And that's what really brings things together. And I think that's what's uh, so important about that mindset is if you can believe in it enough, you can start to do it. And now it doesn't feel like it's an extra, you know, you hold that door for that lady. You're not holding it for some lady. You're holding it for yourself and you're doing those things and those things pay back. And, and, and it's a, a very healthy mindset that with so much division and uh, so much division and, and people trying to, get put onto teams and disconnect everybody from that, mm-hmm. that feeling of we are all connected right now. It's an important message to find that where you can to bring everybody together on that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so that's just kind of one of my theories that I've been batting around. And again, I might've picked it up somewhere, but I think it, it rings true to me somewhere deep. And I feel like I haven't fully articulated exactly how I want to say it yet, mm-hmm. but I think every couple of podcasts I'll bring it up and I'll try to take another swing at it and see if I get better at it. But then, uh, I guess my last question I want to ask you is I've just been blown away by, uh, what you've done both with the podcast, with, with, with the personal training, with, with that gym, that facility you guys have, it looks amazing that the social media posts you do, the, the, the way you, you bring the, the mindset into it. And I just, I'm excited to see where it goes, but just maybe what do you see as kind of your, your more attainable goals that you're kind of currently striving for? And then maybe bigger picture. And I know we kind of already touched on this, but maybe what do you see in the, in the, in the near future is kind of one of your bigger goals that you really want to work on. And then further in the future, where do you want to see taking this? Mm-hmm. So is that is that just for in generally everything? Yeah, everything, the whole thing. What what you want to do, what you want to accomplish, I guess. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So my main, I guess, what I want to do through my personal training, my podcast, my online training, mm-hmm. is I want to help people who were in maybe a similar situation I was, where, you know, from fifteen years old to twenty five years old is just such a blur for me. And it, it, yeah. it, I look back at it and it doesn't really make sense. Um, I wish I had somebody reach out and kind of help me and kind of guide me yeah. a lot sooner. I do think things happen for a reason. And I think we're on our own path and things are going to yeah. happen how they're supposed to. So I don't like, I, I'm not saying yeah. it's a bad thing. I'm just saying I would like to offer that to people. Yeah. So in order to do that, I, I, I do want to have, like, I do want to open up my own gym that has a little bit Mm -hmm. more of that mind body connection kind of include some recovery. Um, I I'm into things like, like I would want to have like a massage therapist in there. I'd want to have like chirotherapy in there. I'd want to have like Mm -hmm. availability to like float tanks is something that I'm, I'm I'm really interested in. Uh, I want to kind of have availability to all of that stuff and kind of just create like a community where everybody's helping and everybody's pushing each other and everybody's growing. And th- that that's like my long-term goal. Yeah. Um, f- f- short term, it's just kind of doing what I need to do in order to get there. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, and, and knowing that you're in Edmonton really opens up more. I, I was, I was kind of, uh, not disappointed, but for some reason I thought that Jimmy was enslaved and I, and I was thinking like, Oh, that's exciting. But I felt like there was, I, I was so much less reach I could get to try and push people towards you. But I know so many people in Edmonton, right? That's where I went to university. I feel like, uh, I'm really excited to try and get people because I believe in you so much. And I think you're going to do amazing things that I feel so confident to push people towards you and to, you know, like I, I wouldn't want to give anybody, I, I feel like my recommendations are very sacred to me. I don't like recommending anything to anybody that I don't really stand behind. And I feel like finding people like yourself is such a cool feeling. Cause now I know if I, if I spot that person that needs that hand, that specific hand that you can hand out and by doing your podcast and by doing, you know, being open and emotionally, that lets you know exactly what kind of hand you're putting out. And that allows people like me to 
see those that that kid that's 15 years old that's on the wrong path and needs that specific hand that only you can put out and me for me to be able to bring that together i think that uh, that that's the most special thing i can see so keep at it keep keep doing uh, keep doing what you're doing get that podcast fired back up as soon as you can i know things are busy and and, and all that and uh and I can't wait to see what you do, man. I, I, I've been blown away and I can't wait to see what you can do. Absolutely. I appreciate it, Nick. I appreciate you having me on. I appreciate the kind words. I look forward to doing this again. Um, yeah, there's a number of the different things that we can talk about. Uh, there's things like you mentioned, like forgiveness, trauma. Uh, those are all things that, yeah. uh, that I'd love to dive into and just, just yeah. continue going, man. I, I like what you're doing and I appreciate yeah. you having me on. Awesome. Well, thanks. You'll be on again soon. Thanks again. Awesome. Thanks, you, man. Stay in touch. All right. Thanks, guys. Uh, that was uh, another uh, really fun episode. I really enjoyed talking to Damon. Like I said, I wish I had more time with him and uh, I'm sure he'll he'll be on again uh, many times over the over the next few years. And I really am excited to see where he goes because I, I really believe in what he says. And I think he has a, a really good knack for what he's doing. And, and I think he has a special relationship uh, just with his own personal journey that can really help people uh, get over that hump and really make some changes not just uh, not just purely aesthetic but uh, inside and out and I think that's what's most powerful and I just really love that kind of stuff you know I'm a big softy and I and I love that kind of emotional spiritual side um, but I think that's what you really need if you want to make real change it's, it can't be just superficial and that's uh, superficial is not in fucking Damon's lex- lexicon if you uh, if you listen to uh, this interview and you got anything out of it I think that's what I got out of it so yeah thanks again for uh, uh, everything you guys do love the positive messages please hit me up if you hear anything on here that you want to uh, adjust um if you want to help me out with this podcast uh, just by listening there's a couple things i can uh, let you in on just to uh, give me certain uh, specific feedback that i'm looking for uh, if you're listening every week anyways um I can just give you a few things to look out for and hit me up with it that would be really helpful um and then on top of that if you know anybody that uh, um runs a youtube channel that'd be huge because i'm trying to uh figure out getting a YouTube channel started for this just for another place for people to listen even if it's uh, I want to get the video component going too but even with just the uh, audio ones I've done so far just putting my logo on top of them putting it on there for another place to listen and then I can start to add the video components for the ones that I get uh, in person and get recorded on video too um, so if anybody knows someone that uh, has a YouTube channel that I could kind of pick their brain on how it works and uh, what's important for it that would be hugely helpful and like I say uh, almost on every outro now if you know anybody that you think would be uh good to help me out with this podcast if you're listening and you want to help out uh there's can, there's ways that are paid and unpaid that i could really uh, use some help with this just on pure man hours you don't have any technical knowledge uh, that's required but if you do that's even better but yeah so uh really really enjoy this process thanks i can't believe we've already had 25 episodes and the kind of support I've uh, seen from everybody uh, about this podcast has just made it so special for me and really has me motivated and, and fired up to make it even even bigger and better uh, at every turn. And it, uh, it may be uh, happening at a little bit slower rate than I want to because I'm such an impatient person and I just want to dive right in and make it uh, exactly how I want it right now. But I know that things take time and I hope that you guys can uh, see the growth that I'm having with this podcast and I hope you can see me getting better because uh, that's all I'm trying to do is just keep getting better at this and making it better for you guys, better content. So yeah, thanks again and I'll see you on the next one.